So you're thinking about having access to the beaches within 30 minutes and having country living? Well, Valley Center may be just for you. Today, we're gonna to be breaking it all down with the cost of living for Valley Center, California, with the housing, the taxes, the utilities, and the food, all of it. So we're gonna get after it right now. What's up, amazing people? I'm Liz LaFour here with the Mortgage List team located out of San Diego, California. And if this is the first time to my channel and you're looking to learn everything about what it's like to live, eat, sleep, and play here in San Diego, you definitely want to click that subscribe button and tap that little bell so that way you're reminded every single time we release a new video. Because guess what? We release them every single week. And honestly, my team and I are getting phone calls every single day with people just like you thinking about making that move to San Diego or another part of San Diego, maybe even Valley Center. And if you're thinking about making that move, you definitely want to reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text, or an email, whatever is easiest for you. We definitely want to have your back when you're moving to San Diego. So now let's get after the cost of living for Valley Center, California. So honestly, Valley Center may or may not be for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the cost of living, breaking all the details down, but first, we wanna make sure just to give you a little bit of insight about Valley Center. So Valley Center is, again, rural, which means that it's up the hill, out on the outskirts, and it's gonna take you a little time to get there. So we're gonna be talking about a little bit about the transportation, but first off, you need to know that it's going to take you a little longer to get into Valley Center, so for us locals here in Escondido and in San Marcos, also in San Diego, to get to Valley Center, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. So remember rural country living, so you have to actually go from either the 15 freeway or the 78, either one, and technically they both connect. They go into the city of Escondido, and then from Escondido, you actually have to travel up the hill. And I'm talking about if you start on the 15 and the 78, you will be back on West Valley Parkway. And so you'll have to go all the way up the hill from West Valley to East Valley, and then up the hill to Valley Center. So just to get from the freeway, it's going to take you about 15 minutes. But on the flip side, Valley Center also gives available financing that goes up to 100% financing, meaning you don't have a down payment. So it is actually pretty customary where if you're buying in Valley Center, you may be using these types of financing. Even though the housing cost is a little bit more expensive, sometimes when you're looking at different options, which we definitely will be discussing that. But it just gives you an opportunity to know that if you go into the rural areas, such as Valley Center, where you have more land, there is more options for you. And with the cost that I was talking about, also remember that Valley Center is located in San Diego. So San Diego, also in California, where we have the Sunshine Tax. So of course you are gonna have in general a higher cost of living when it comes to Valley Center because it's located in San Diego. So Valley Center used to have a population of 9,842 people back in 2010. Remember what I said, rural financing, rural areas, therefore the population is smaller, so it's a smaller town. Today they're looking at about 11,000 plus on regards to their population in Valley Center. And so Valley Center is a true suburb of San Diego. There are definitely some communities, some gated um, homes that you're gonna be finding in Valley Center as well. But with 30 minutes from the beaches, this is definitely the ability of having that extra land within Valley Center and still being able to get to the beaches and the mountains for the snow within 30 to 40 minutes. All right, so first on our list is gonna be home prices, number one. So the average home prices in San Diego are at $645,300. When it comes to Valley Center, Valley Center is actually a little bit higher. So with the average home prices in San Diego at $645,300, Valley Center was originally at $611,600. But the end of December 2019, they actually increased to $702,500. And as of this video, Valley Center had homes for sale ranging between $504,000 to $3.5 million, 25 of them. So typically you're gonna find that you're gonna have less renters when it comes to Valley Center. Honestly, it's at 14.4% of people that live in Valley Center are actually renting. In comparison to Escondido, where you have 48.5% of people that live in Escondido are renting. Two completely different populations. You're talking about Valley Center, which is about 11,000 people in comparison to Escondido, which is 151,000 
plus people, very different type of population, but at least you can see that obviously in Valley Center, you're gonna most likely own a home just because of the land piece and all the amenities and the agriculture that you're gonna get along with Valley Center. So if you're thinking about renting in Valley Center, if you're doing a three bedroom, you're gonna be looking at $2,180. And then when comparing to a four bedroom, you're gonna be looking at $2,670 just for Valley Center. So enough about housing, on to number two, utilities. So honestly, this is gonna get really expensive. One piece of the fact that utilities in general in Valley Center are more expensive than Escondido, San Marcos, San Diego, um, that comes along with the fact that the weather in Valley Center is going to be a lot hotter than it is in, not a lot, but yes, it's gonna be hotter than Escondido, and then obviously from San Marcos, and then of course Rancho Barnardo, which are the next cities over. Um, so when you go to Valley Center, you think of a country living more of like a desert kind of area, even though there are houses, the um, weather and the heat is actually a little bit higher. So honestly, Valley Center actually ranges eight to 10% more expensive from the national average on the utilities. So like I said, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So let's break down just a little bit about those utilities. When it comes to Valley Center specifically, Valley Center is actually connected to San Diego Gas and Electric. So San Diego Gas and Electric does this level playing plan where you can actually level out your bills for the last six months. So let's say that every single month for the last six months, you got six bills that you were going anywhere between 300 to $900. Well, they would add all of those up and then they would divide by six months. That would be your next monthly bill for the next six months. So they average out your plan. So that's gonna definitely be something that you're gonna wanna look into when it comes to Valley Center. So that way you have like a roundabout bill and you're not having these skyrocketing months in June, July, and August. Um, because it's going to be hot in general in Valley Center, but specifically in those months. So when you're living in Valley Center, you're gonna have SDG&E for your gas and electric, and then you need your water and garbage. Well, that comes to the city of Valley Center. City Valley Center will actually be taking care of that for you. Um, one, remember that, again, rural, so it means that you got a lot of land, so you have to remember where you're gonna actually put your garbage can, so that's gonna be something that's gonna be pretty important to you. Um, and then also, of course, the water. So depending on how much land you have, that water bill can get really expensive. So I just want to um, tidbit on that is that I had a client that was actually buying, in Valley Center, buying actually avocado groves. And so not only did they have the budget, their regular principal interest, taxes, insurance, their regular monthly payment when it came to the bank, they also needed a budget with the, along the water that was gonna go to those avocado groves. So that's a whole separate bill. Here in Escondido, you're gonna actually end up finding that Escondido, you just got your regular water bill and your garbage from the city of Escondido. In comparison, you're looking at maybe up for 100 to $150 for water and then for garbage. Well, in Valley Center, it's very different because remember, if you have an avocado groves of acres that you have to cover, maybe it's going to be something that those avocados are being given to or being sold to restaurants in another city or restaurants in Escondido. You're going to need to keep that up. And so in this case, the home that my clients were buying, they actually had those avocado groves of which were actually getting sold all those avocados to those restaurants. And so that budget was an additional $1,700 of water just for those avocado groves. So don't just look at Valley Center as, oh, it's country living. There's additional amenities that you're gonna have to take into account when it comes to your budget. The other thing that you may wanna be thinking about is gonna be solar. Remember what I said earlier about the weather. In Valley Center, it is hotter. So why not take advantage of solar where you can actually use that energy to offset your gas and electric bills to be able to reduce the amount of what you're paying on a monthly basis. Depending on how the solar panels were set up, when they first were actually put on the house or when you maybe end up adding them, you want to make sure that you overestimate what the amount is that you want for your um, solar. Because what happens is that the majority of people end up actually just getting solar and they don't assume that their electric bill is gonna get higher. They just assume that their sdg e bill is just gonna get wiped out because they got solar. The problem is that in when we get solar, we end up turning everything else on. Before we had solar, we were very cautious of what we turned on. We maybe turn something on like the AC or the heater every now and then, 
But then we get our solar and then we start thinking, oh, well, we got solar and we can turn it all on. The problem with that is that when you built the solar, it wasn't set up for you to maximize it times 10. And therefore now you have an extra bill. So it's something that you want to be aware of in general when you do get solar or when you're getting buying a home and you're taking over a solar, you want to be able to see what they're using as energy bills and then to then determine as is this really realistic? Is this going to be something that it's going to end up giving you a higher bill because the solar that was obtained on the property was not that great? Or is it going to wipe out the bill? And so that way you don't have any more. Um, and so when you're looking at Valley Center, you want to be able to just think outside the box because there is a lot more in Valley Center that typically does not apply when you're looking at just a general home in San Diego or San Marcos or in Escondido, for example, because you're not going to find as much land in those areas every now and then yes but almost majority of the time it's just not common so on average when it comes to the utilities you're going to expect in valley center that one your water and your garbage is going to be a little bit more expensive so where in escondido let's say for example we're looking at anywhere between about 100 to 150 dollars in valley center you're going to be looking at closer to about 200 dollars range and then depending again what's on your property will depend on how extra bills that you end up having so you got extra acreage that you got to take care of then you're going to have extra water bills when it comes along with it and then going back to your gas and electric gas and electric is going to be on average honestly about 200 to 300 dollars a month i know that's a big average but even then it's going to be even a little bit higher depending on again the amount of property all right that was a lot of information of all about utilities so now let's go on to number three which is transportation transportation is honestly just like san diego 80 percent of people in general are going to have a car in san diego and especially in valley center Remember what I said in the very beginning as to where Valley Center is located. So to get from the 15 into physically Valley Center, it's going to take you at least 20 minutes. Just to get from my home in Escondido on the bottom of the grade, which is the bottom of the hill, all the way up into the top of the hill of Valley Center, that in itself is going to take you about 10 minutes. So if you think about from going from the top of Valley Center, not even going through all of the inskirts of Valley Center because Valley Center is pretty large when it comes to the acreage, honestly, you're not going to not have a car. Um, one thing that you will notice though in Valley Center is that in lieu of walking, you will find horses that are, you know, riding you along in different locations. So that is actually something very customary that you're going to find in Valley Center. Um, so whether somebody does or doesn't have a car, they will still end up riding their horses on that same road as to where you have your car. Um, and then again, depending on where you are in Valley Center, whether you're all the way down to where Yellow Deli is, you're definitely gonna wanna have a car because you are in skirts of Valley Center just to get back into Escondido to maybe go to a grocery store. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the gas prices when it comes to Valley Center. Valley Center only has three gas stations. So when you compare that to, let's say Escondido, which is the neighboring city, Escondido has pretty much gas stations on every other block, um, if not within at least a mile radius. Um, Valley Center is not like that. Valley Center has three gas stations, and obviously because of the three gas stations, you're going to find that gas is more expensive in Valley Center than it is in any neighboring cities because they have so little. So before you go up the hill to go home, you want to make sure that you get gas on the bottom of the hill before you go up, because then at least you're paying and saving a little bit of money on your cost of living while you're living in Valley Center. While neighboring cities have gas prices at about $3.09 to about $3.53, that's not how Valley Center is. Remember those three gas stations? So you're gonna end up finding gas about four plus dollars actually in Valley Center because of those three gas stations. While in the national average, we're looking at gas prices at $2.89. So it's a definitely a different comparison. Remember what we were talking about and the fact that Valley Center in general is a higher cost of living in comparison to San Diego. And then of course, in comparison to the national average. So honestly, how often are you gonna end up filling up when it comes to gas? Myself, I have a GMC Yukon XL. So it's kind yeah. of a big car. And so typically my gas right now during the pandemic, um, I am actually filling up pretty much like every two weeks, sometimes even every three weeks because we're pretty much just in town. However, pre-pandemic, I was actually filling up once a week um, and on my 27 gallon tank, 
gas prices in general on an average at about three, three fifty, um, you're going to find that it's going to be about 70 to 85 dollars on a full gas tank. However, when you're going again to Valley Center, it's not going to last as long because you're going to spend a lot of the money or spend a little bit of your gas actually just going up the hill. And so I would say that my gas tank would actually last a little bit less, maybe like a day less because um, it's getting used to go up the hill and back down the hill to take, be able to take my kids to school. So it's just something that you want to think about when you're looking at Valley Center that the gas prices will definitely affect your income in fact that there's going to take more of your income when you're actually buying in Valley Center. But then also that the cost of living in general, when it comes to transportation in Valley Center, things that you got to think about as to where it's actually located and how far it is from your actual work. So if you're going to live in Valley Center, you're going to go, let's say, work in Carmel Valley or Carmel Mountain, which is a good 45 to 50 minutes away. That may or may not be something that you want to conquer because it's going to be a long drive for a long period of time. Um, and so if it's something that you're going to be living in Valley Center, but then working in Escondido, that may be a little bit easier. Um, also keep in mind that when it comes to transportation, also determining the um, kids and actually where they're going to be going to school is also something that you got to take in mind. There is schools in Valley Center, of course, but then a lot of the people that live in Valley Center also travel down into Escondido to go to other schools like San Pasquale Union and then like um, San Pasquale High School along with Escondido High School. So it just depends. Um, some of the kids that are actually living in Valley Center, they are definitely driving to get to their school of choice. Okay, so now on to number four, cost of food. So cost of food. Valley Center doesn't have a lot of food. So um, <laughs> it's Valley Center. So therefore it's rural and therefore there is not a lot of restaurants. In Valley Center, there's actually only 10 restaurants. And to be quite honest, a lot of the time, when we travel up to Valley Center, the majority of the time, we're actually gonna just end up eating in one of the casinos. Whether it's Harris Casino, Palma Casino, or Paula Casino, um, that's really where you're gonna typically end up eating. Out of the 10 restaurants, the majority of those restaurants are actually inside the casino that you're gonna end up finding on Yelp. And so when you look at different options and it comes to eating, some of the places that you may want to try is actually Portinos, which is actually also in Valley Center. And then the other spot that you want to try is actually Yellow Deli. Yellow Deli is actually outskirts. I mean, it's out there. So you're going to definitely want to be driving a little bit before you actually get there. But when you do get there, they, they definitely have some sandwiches that are really good. Well, according to my husband, they are because they actually have some really good reviews. Even though they're out there, they actually have some really good sub sandwiches. Um, a lot of the linemen end up being out there for a little while. And because in Valley Center, there is not a lot of restaurants, you don't have a lot of options. So you either got one taco shop that you may end up going to, or you got Portinos, which is typically not open at 2 a.m. And then you got the sub shop, which is Yellow Deli. So when you're looking at going out and living in Valley Center, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not going out there for per se, the ability of having restaurants because that you're really gonna end up just going down the hill into Escondido or going around the side to go to Murrieta and Temecula, which is actually the back way of getting out of Valley Center. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna anticipate. Valley Center is really more so again, for the land that you're buying and for the ability of having that country living with the closeness of the beaches. So because there is not a lot of restaurants in Valley Center, the cost of the food is not as expensive. So if you end up in Portinos or the Yellow Deli or the Mexican shop, in those spots, you're probably gonna be able to get out of there with, let's say myself, my husband, and my two girls with about 50 bucks. Right, so about 10 to $12 for each of us. Um, if you're doing Portinos and you're sitting down, and most likely it's gonna be just a little bit more expensive. Let's add another $20 um, to that amount. That's something that you may expect at Portinos. Um, then on the flip side, you're looking at the casinos. Casinos, you're gonna end up typically doing all you can eat kind of sorts of stuff. And because of that, obviously your cost of food is gonna be a bit more expensive. And then when you look at the expense, you're looking at about 20 to $30 per person depending on their age, of course, and every now and then you can actually um, take your kids there. Not something I do personally, um, but that's obviously up to you. Um, you can take your kids in there and then you can um, eat just at the restaurant. And then of course you gotta leave because they're not 21 and over. Um, but it does just give you an option as to where you can eat. But again, if you're looking at eating in the casinos, it is going to be a bit more expensive. So if you're looking like 20 to $30 per person, plus your two kids, 
you're looking at over $100 just for one meal. So just think of it as kind of a luxury thing when it comes to Valley Center or just take yourself down the road into Escondido where you're gonna end up finding more of the restaurants. Another great thing about Valley Center is that it has a farmer's market. And because of the farmer's market, now you have fresh fruit, fresh vegetables on a regular basis. And so typically every single week is something that you can go get your groceries, from the farmer's market instead of having to go down the hill to a grocery store. Of course, they do have a couple of grocery stores. Again, limitation as to what you're looking at. So it just gives you some different options when it comes to cost of food, whether you're gonna be spending the money in one of the 10 restaurants, um, including <laughs> the casinos, or if you're going to be ending up spending a little bit of the money from farmer's markets or just down the hill to get to one of the other restaurants or the um, other grocery stores. <laughs> So on to our number five, our favorite topic, taxes. So taxes in San Diego in general are about 1.25%. In Valley Center, they're pretty much exactly the same. So when you're buying a home, you're gonna be looking at 1.25% of the property taxes in Valley Center for your new home. So while property taxes in general for San Diego, while also in Valley Center, are gonna be looking at about 1.25%, there's actually gated communities in Valley Center. So even though there is a lot of rural, there's a lot of um, land that you're gonna end up buying, in some of those gated communities, you're gonna end up actually paying more in taxes for those homes because just as I've been talking about, you get a lot of land. Well, years ago, they built Woods Valley and in Woods Valley, there was just land. And so they had to build up the houses that existed build the streets along with all of that. So with that, they now also pay additional taxes along with their regular San Diego County property taxes. And so therefore their monthly payments are a bit more expensive. When you look at the property taxes for what we call Malaroos, in Valley Center for Woods Valley, you're looking at anywhere between four to $8,000 in additional taxes depending on what phase the home was when it was originally built. And so you just wanna make sure that you're accounting for those numbers when it comes to your monthly payment, because also depending on whether you're buying one of those homes that was built back almost 10 years ago, um, which technically still has those Malaroos, which will exist for the entire of 30 years. So they got about 15 to 20 years left. Um, and then versus the ability of looking at some new construction that's happening right now in Valley Center, which is more videos to come because we are definitely gonna be talking about new construction in Valley Center and in Escondido and all of the county of San Diego. So let's keep talking about taxes. Taxes in San Diego are at 7.8% on sales tax, whereas the national average is at 7.3%. And then the income tax at a whopping 9.3%. And then we look at the US average at a 4.6%. Yes, I know, we pay a lot of taxes when it comes to San Diego and in California. It's called sunshine tax for a reason. <laughs> so while some taxes in San Diego, when it comes to the property, maybe that one and a quarter may have Melarus as well. So in, in addition to that, um, a monthly payment, some homes in Valley Center are older. So therefore they don't have Melarus and they don't have those special assessments. And so also they don't have that one and a quarter percent. So you may actually end up finding homes in Valley Center that are older and that were just renovated that have closer to a 1.02% when it comes to property taxes. So don't get scared away just because in general taxes are higher when it comes to San Diego and then obviously Valley Center. And then obviously because we have additional Melarus in, in comparison to like the communities that we've got going on. Um, but there are homes that are available in Valley Center that have lower tax ratings. So the other detail of that is that you wanna make sure that you have the correct amount of taxes accounted for your monthly payment. A lot, or actually, you know what, just too many times, I find clients with not enough money in their escrow account. So one year after they buy their home, when the mortgage company that they have reviews their escrow account, they determine that they don't have enough money to pay out their regular taxes that are due in November, late in December, with the second installment that's due in March, late in April, plus the home insurance. And let's not forget talking about home insurance in general. When you look at Valley Center, obviously it is a more of a fire area and because it's more of a fire area you're, you're going to have more expensive insurance and so whereas Escondido for example home insurance is about thousand dollars when you look at Valley Center you're going to be looking closer to about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars when it comes to fire insurance so it's just something that you want to be aware of when you're looking at your total escrow account that you want to make sure that you have enough money inside of that account and so that you double check those taxes before you actually close on your new home 
Honestly, taxes is just a loaded question. There's so much information when it comes to property taxes and local taxes when it comes to San Diego and then especially in Valley Center. So if you have a question on the taxes, you honestly just need to reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text or an email when you're making that move to San Diego or Valley Center because we definitely got your back when you're moving. And honestly, every single day we're receiving phone calls with new clients that are thinking about making that move. And it's just amazing to get those phone calls because we get to show them all the amazing things about San Diego and the not so amazing things about San Diego and Valley Center, mainly that drive that we were talking about. <laughs> and so when you're making that move, you definitely just want to reach out. Every single week, we are going to be releasing new videos about the cost of living and about the different areas, about living, eating, sleeping, and playing in San Diego. So you definitely want to click that subscribe button, tap that little bell, so that way you're reminded every single time we release a new video. And until next time, see you later.